Okay, so 6.3 is going to talk about different triangle angle theorems. So many of these you probably already know, but we're just going to go ahead and review them all together anyway. So we're basically going to do these three things. The measures of the interior angles at 180, the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent, and the exterior angle theorem. Okay, so some you'll just find numerically, some will set up equations to solve, and that's the idea. All right, so the first theorem is the triangle sum theorem. And that basically says that when you add up all three of the inside angles of a triangle, they always add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so on the first example, you can do work. You can probably do some of these in your head. But we know if we had an equation, I would have 65 plus 57 plus my third angle, and they all have to add up to 180. Um, you don't necessarily have to show work for this. Um, so that's okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 57 and subtract 65 to find that missing angle. So 180 minus 57 minus 65 on a calculator. And I got 58 degrees. Um, the pictures will not always be drawn to size. So sometimes I just draw triangles and I just label them numerically. Okay. Um, next. We're going to get a little bit more complicated since I think most of you have seen this idea before. So we've got this drawing inside this angle is 102. I want to find this missing angle and I know that that angle right here is 137 degrees. So the first thing I notice is I probably won't be able to find this uh, directly, but I can find other angles. So you should have work labeled, basically, okay? And it doesn't have to be an equation or anything formal. But these two angles together make a straight line, which means they add up to 180. So if I take off 137, and you don't have to show this work, but what I would kind of expect is that you would show that this is labeled as 43 inside, okay? And so that's kind of showing me your thought process to where if your answer is incorrect, I can address where you might have made the error or not. Next, I'm going to think of this as one big triangle. So I'll make it purple so you can tell what I'm looking at. So then I've got one, two, three angles. And so once again, I know they all add up to 180. So on a calculator, I would take off that 43 degrees that I know, and I would take off the 102 degrees. And then that would tell me that third angle. Even though I'm not asking for that, I need to use that to help. So uh, minus 43 minus 102. And so I got 35 degrees. Okay. The last thing is I know these two angles together make a straight line. So I know they need to add up to 180. So if I take off that 35, I'll find that obtuse angle on the outside. Now, some of you might have done this a different way, and that's fine. But all together, I'm looking at 145 degrees. There should be some type of thought process. Um, showing how you get your answer. If it's just labeling these, that's enough. You don't necessarily have to show this work on the side, okay? Let's look at example number three. So I'm looking for this angle right here, okay? Well, what we know is since we have two lines that are being crossed, we do have vertical angles here and here. So I know those are equal measures. So if I kind of look at this, as one big triangle, because it is, I know all three of these angles have to add up to 180. So if I take 180 and I subtract the 30 that we know and the 20 that we know, we would get 130. Now, you might have been able to do this without showing any work, and that's fine too, okay? It really depends on the diagram how complicated it is. So this one's 130, and I'll circle it. If you do have a lot of work shown, um, just circle your answer or make it very clear on your homework. Sometimes I have a different colored box, so then it's easy to show. All right, my last example for this theorem has two triangles that are touching. I know these two angles together have to add up to 90 because that's our perpendicular symbol. 
Um, so I'm going to look at this triangle right here. I know I'm looking for the angle in the other triangle, but I was trying to find as much information as I can. So all three of these angles have to add up to 180. So in a calculator, we're going to take that off and take that off. So we know what's left for our third angle. So 180 minus 84 minus 36. That gives us 60 degrees for this angle. And hopefully you would label that. Okay, now both of these together, I said added up to 90. So if we take off that 60 that we know, that leaves 30 degrees for that small angle. Okay, so then I can think of this triangle right here. And we know all three of those add up to 180. So if we take off 86 and we take off 30, that will give us our missing angle that we're actually looking for. I got 64. Okay. All right. Um, now we can do the same idea except using some equations. And these are pretty similar. Uh, one says solve for x, and the other says find the measure of angle A. So just make sure on the quiz and the homework that you pay attention to the directions. Okay. So on this example, all we want to do is solve for x. So I know these three angles have to add up. to equal 180 total. So if I see that equation, I at least know that you understand the relationship. And then if you can solve that in your head, that's fine too. So I've got x, and then I'm actually just gonna add those three numbers together since they're on the same side. I got 183 equals 180. So then if we solve for x, I'm gonna subtract 183 and so x equals negative 3, okay? It's negative 3 degrees, but I'm not super picky about that. Since all we wanted to know was x, then I would be done. On my last example, when we solve, we're going to have the same idea. We have all three of these angles. And they have to add up to 180. So now I've got actually x plus x gives me 2x. And then if we add 59 plus 84 plus 51, I get 194. Okay, so to solve this, I would subtract 194. So 2x equals negative 14. Those are being multiplied, so we'll divide by 2. And so x equals negative 7 except we want to find the measure of angle A. So here's A, and we're going to substitute x equals negative 7. So negative 7 plus 51 gives us 44. So angle A is 44 degrees. Okay, so it's a little farther. Our next theorem you might have heard of, I'm not really sure, but it talks about a triangle, and if we extend one of the sides, we make what's called an exterior angle. And so this exterior angle right here, we let that be E, the theorem says that that angle measure is going to be the same as if we add the two angles together that are not touching that. So we call those remote interior, remote interior angles. You don't have to know that word. There won't be any definitions on your quiz or anything, but that's technically what they're called. So it's the two angles inside the triangle that are not touching that exterior angle. Okay, so C doesn't have anything to do with that. There's a little short proof that does involve C, but that's the idea because you know if these two angles E and C have to add up to 180, well then these would have to be equal. All right, so let's use that idea. So here is an angle 120, and these are the two angles that it's not touching. So I'm going to say that 120 has to add up to angle U plus angle T, which is 50. And now for this, you might not need to show me this equation. I just want to make this very clear for all students, though. So to solve for U, we'll subtract 50. So angle U is 70 degrees. Okay. 
And so really, the indirect proof, if you don't want to use this idea, you can always get these answers with another strategy. So we know these two angles add up to 180, so this is going to be 60. And then we know these three angles make up a triangle which add up to 180. So if this, we've got u plus 60 plus 50, that has to equal 180 as well. So u plus 110, subtract 110, and we get u equals 70. So it's not like this is a new concept. If you don't want to memorize this, um, you t technically don't have to. There are other ways, even when we have equations like this, that we can mathematically get the answer without utilizing this theorem. It just makes it quicker. All right, so let's look at this example. It says solve for x. So I've got this angle, which is outside the triangle, and these are the two angles that my we're not touching because we're touching R. So we know that 8 plus 6x has to add up to these two together. So 30 plus 4x plus 2. And then from here, we can combine some like terms or solve if you want to. So 4x, 30 plus 2 is 32. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the x's on one side, so I'll subtract 4x. So 8 plus 2x equals 32. Subtract 8. So 2x equals 24, and divide by 2. So x equals 12. And that's what we were looking for. Angle S. We want to find the measure of this. So, angle S is not labeled, and that's fine. We might have to do some other work, okay? So, what we do know is this and this, that 140 has to add up to these two angles together. So, 3x plus 4 plus 8x plus 4. So I'm going to combine like terms. So 3 plus 8 is 11. 4 plus 4 is 8. They're on the same side, so we just use their signs. I'm going to subtract 8. So 132. Those are being multiplied, so we'll divide by 11. And so x equals 12. So if that's what x is, I know s is equal to 3x plus 4. So I'm going to substitute 12 where I see an x. So 3 times 12 plus 4. So s equals 36 plus 4. So angle s is equal to 40 degrees. And you might, um, you might have a different strategy. All right. The last theorem that we want to talk about is the isosceles triangle theorem. So as a review, an isosceles triangle means you have at least two sides that are congruent. So in the isosceles triangle, the angles opposite the congruent signs are also congruent. So remember, we show our marks by having them the same. So that means that AC is the same length as BC, okay? And so that means since that side is across from angle B and this side is across from angle A, that means that angle A has to be the same measure as angle B. All right. So some other terms just to review is that the altitude. Altitude means that we are drawing um, a line from one vertex to the other side and it forms a right angle. It actually bisects the angle. So what bisect means is that these two angles are the same size. And then when you bisect the angle, you also, the side across from it's equal. So these A to M is also equal to M to B to M. Okay. So that's kind of how that works. So um, we'll draw little, two little slashes here for the angles. So every time we add a little slash mark, it means that that's a different angle measurement. All right. So let's look at our first example. It says find x. And so we kind of, we're going to switch these triangles all around just to see if you can understand the orientation. So what we notice is that these two sides right here 
those are marked as the same size, okay? So you can't go by what something looks like, go by the markings. So that means that across from this side, the angle that it's not touching, and this side, the angle that it's not touching, these two also must be equal. So if that's 54, that means that this is 54, okay? And then from our first theorem, we know that all angles add up to 180. So we'll go ahead and subtract that. And I got 72 degrees. Okay. Our drawings are going to get a little bit more complex. So let's go ahead and look at this one. We've got two triangles that are kind of touching. So once again, go to the angle that's opposite. And since my sides are equal, I know those angles have to be equal. So this is also going to be 65. So my X is in this triangle, but I don't really know any information about that yet. So I know these three have to add up to 180. So we'll go ahead and take those off. So 180 minus 65 minus 65 gives us 50 degrees for this third angle. Now, vertical angles, this and this, these are both vertical. So if that's 50, that means that this angle is 50. And then we're going to look at the side. So this side is across from that angle. And this side that has two slashes is across from that angle. So you should always go across, okay? So if that angle is 50, that means that this angle is 50. And then we have these three angles. So 180 minus 50 minus 50 gives us 80 degrees. Okay, so you might have to use a couple of pieces of information to find what they want. All right, I always like when they give us the piece of information um, to label what that is. So this is x plus 94 because I see a 2 so I don't want to think oh that's 2 degrees. And so we're going to have the directions that say find um, x. Okay, well, I don't have any actual measurements here, so I'm going to go ahead and start my bottom triangle. So this side is across from that angle, and this side is across from that angle. So if those sides are equal, then that means that this is 47. And I don't necessarily have to find that missing angle because vertical angles say that that's 47. So I only find information if I need it. So then I look at these double slash. So the double slash is across and this double slash is across. So if that one's 47, this one's 47. And we know that all three angles have to add up to 180. So I've got X plus 94 plus 47 plus 47, and that has to equal 180. So X plus, I'm going to add those together. So subtract 188, and so X equals negative 8, okay? That's not the angle measurement, that's just what X is. All right, so on your student practice, I do have the directions we had last quarter on this one. So I have four sections, I believe, one, two, three, four. And what I want you to do is there's three problems in each section. You can pick any two. If you want to do more in each section, that's fine. Um, your grade won't be downgraded because of it. Remember, this is your chance to learn. So just show some type of work when possible. I know there might be one or two questions where there's nothing to write, but at least show an equation you're using or label some of the other angles or write me some words or something. So you should have eight problems minimum submitted. Okay. All right. Good luck.